And uh, Genesis uh, 6, uh, the first four verses, you know, and it came to pass when, when man began to increase upon the earth and daughters were born to them, the B'nai Elohim saw that the daughters of men were good and they took themselves from whomever they chose. And the Nephilim were on the earth in those days. And also afterwards, when the B'nai Elohim would consort with the daughters of men who would bear them children. They were the mighty who from old were men of renown. Who were these Elohim? Uh, I've often wondered, how could it be possible that sons of God, we think of them as spiritual beings, how could they mate with uh, human, human women? Um, right. How did that work? What, what were the mechanics? And we know that B'nai Elohim means the children of the gods or the godlike. Um, maybe they were, I don't know, men... Uh, or entities from even other planets, uh, someplace else in the universe that were close to us, either descended from us, or maybe we were descended from them with special powers that men did not yet have. I mean, the literal meaning of Nephilim is the fallen ones, but fallen from where? Who were these uh, B'nai mm -hmm. Elohim, these sons of God, and who were the, the Nephilim? I don't know. Thoughts? Well, uh, I, I, think, I think if you, if you would explore the work of Zachariah Sitchin, Mm -hmm. uh, who goes very much into um, uh, his theory uh, of the Anunnaki, and there was a lot of bio, you know, engine bioengineering going on, those kinds of things. And who who knows? They could have done it the old-fashioned way, um, mm -hmm. but but they were definitely uh, part of our. If you go with the Stitchin hypothesis, they were definitely uh, part of our genetic makeup. Mm -hmm. And, and the fallen ones, of course, gets into the theology of, you know, these, they, they, they disobeyed the creator and, or God, if you will. Mm -hmm. But definitely these, these I, I, again, I think it's pretty clear that they're astronauts. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if, they, you, if you take the words, the fallen ones, if you look at that as though you're actually just reading words instead mm -hmm. of talking about some kind of doctrinal stuff, Mm -hmm. um, what does it say to you? It says that they came from the sky, they came from the sky. Above, yeah. Above, yeah. which, yeah. you know, that's what all the mythologies of every exactly. civilization has exactly. always been yeah. telling us. And, and, um, and, and, so, the, and the thing that gets people nervous about this, uh, clergy or, you know, um, is that it implies to them that there's no God. Mm hmm. And so, and, and, and that's where it gets muddied and what have you. Um, and and there, there is data from, from experiencers and whoever that say some of these beings do acknowledge an energy, an, ent an, an intelligence, but it's not the God that we do. A, a, a human being who's a male and who's judgmental and what have you, their theologies yeah. are very, very different. We're saying that there are beings and all these cosmologies or at least civilization, Native American, Aboriginal, that, that, that beings have come down from the sky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you know, it, a lot ooh, of people have been saying that for a long, long, long time, and still we don't listen. What, what really gets me about this, if, if people are going to be honest about it, uh, we're not really saying anything that isn't already in the tradition. Um, as we're talking, uh, we're approaching, we're in the Christmas season. And uh, there are a lot of, uh, of Christian congregations who would be very upset to hear us talking about um, people coming yes. from other dimensions or people coming from other realities or something like that. And yet at the Christmas season, they're going to stand up and sing, angels we have heard on high or angels from the realms of glory. And they're talking about entities or spiritual beings that step from another dimension into our reality. Uh, that's part of the Christmas carols that we sing. So it's in the tradition. It's just a matter of looking at it with open eyes and saying, what are we really thinking about? Could there be uh, another reality that, uh, that right. this is about? Well, I mean, honestly, Jim, that another reality is the message of Christianity. Oh, absolutely. Um, right? So like, yeah. now it's just thinking about what that means in a slightly different way. And it mm -hmm. might not even be a different at all, because like you say, um, we're, it's, it's quite copacetic and standard and, and canonical to say that uh, 
there are beings in a different realm. Yeah. It's yeah. a spiritual realm. And that's where God lives. That's where angels live. Um, and really, if you're if you're saying that, you're already saying that angels are extraterrestrial. Exactly. You're, exactly. you're already saying that they're yeah. um, they're they're in fact even beyond extraterrestrial because they are immaterial, which mm -hmm. is completely standard yeah, uh, yeah. doctrine. Um, so yeah. we're. If, if you wanted to say that, um, you know, well, are they from a different uh, universe? Are they from a different, um, like, what does that mean? Because what mm -hmm. is a plane of existence? Really? Mm -hmm. Like, whereas it's actually a lot easier and more palatable and uh, less fanciful in a mm -hmm. way to say, well, actually, maybe they're just from a different planet. Yeah. yeah. Yep. or a different galaxy um there's a it takes a lot less belief yeah to me yeah to say I, I, that there's life on another planet rather than there's this whole other universe like yeah okay i i i agree and i think it also answers some questions that a lot of people have but they're afraid to ask him how can you reconcile gentle jesus meek and mild with the alway of the old testament who says go kill all the canaanites you know, mm -hmm. and in the book of, uh, in, in, in Exodus, he gives the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not murder. And then a couple of pages later, now go murder all the Canaanites, women, children, animals, everything. Uh, how do you reconcile a God like that? Now, if you say that Yahweh is one of the Elohim, and maybe not a not, not quite so nice member of the Elohim, it makes perfect sense. It answers all of those biblical questions. That, well, and, and it, yeah. it also, it also, because see, it's, 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 it's where we're going with it. Because uh, two quick points. One, that means Jesus is not fully human. But, but now we will be wind up saying that he's probably a, an extraterrestrial hybrid. That's number one. That's going to that that's going to be hard to take. But you, we also have to remember that Yahweh, when he's telling you not to murder, not to covet, not to commit adultery, he's saying you don't do that to other Jews. Mm -hmm. You don't do that to other Israelites. Mm -hmm. That's right. what he's not talking about those other folk. When Jesus comes along. He's saying, well, I'm, I got all that, but I'm asking you to be, bring your A game. Mm -hmm. You don't do that to anybody. Mm -hmm. You don't do it to the uncircumcised Goyim. You don't do that to the Romans. You don't do that to the Greeks. So there's a whole different Velton show mm -hmm. from the teachings of Jesus, even though they're connected. Mm -hmm. my, my concern, and I do this all the time, I'm just saying that so we know where we're going. You're talking about Christmas. It is Christmas. But if you put that story together, Gabriel has got the best job in the world. He's in the Quran. You know, everywhere he goes, women get pregnant. Now, they may be older <laughs> women, but every time Gabriel shows up, somebody, I told my girlfriend the other day, I said, if anything ever happened, don't tell me that an angel came. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> but, 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 you know, so, so you, you know, and the angel visits, Samson's wife doesn't even get a name. Her husband yeah. is Manoah. You know, next thing you know, she's pregnant. Samson, these, you know, all these superhuman men. But yeah. I'm just saying where we're going is, that's the theological piece for Christians with what we're going to be saying. Because if your mother is human, if Miriam is human, which we Miriam seemed to be, Mary seemed to be, and your father's not, that means you're not fully human. No. No. Right. So, but Michael, Jesus is fully human in the same way that you are fully human, in that none of us are fully human because nobody's been fully human since Adam. So on, on your point about the, um, you know, Gabriel, I think that's a really uh, amazing co concept that I think is really brushed over. Because if you read uh, the book of Matthew, you get, um, oh, yeah, so here's Mary. Uh, Gabriel shows up, tells her she's going to be pregnant. Okay, that's all we get. Um, but he's Luke, also in he's also in Daniel. He shows up in same angel, <laughs> same same right. Gabriel shows up in you know, Daniel. Yeah, exactly. He tells Elizabeth. And, then, and, and, right. and shows up right. and shows up in the cave with Muhammad too and says right. write yeah. the Quran. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So so Luke actually comes at it with an investigative journalist edge and he says, Hey, what's going on? And to me it sounds when in reading uh, the first couple chapters of Luke, 
you get a very distinct impression that he has gone around and interviewed a whole bunch of people like anybody who could find um, who was around at, in Bethlehem uh, during that time. And what Luke says is uh, he does give a lot more detail and he actually gives an incredible amount of detail. Um, but when it comes to uh, how, how does Mary get pregnant? Um, he goes from Gabriel shows up he tells, he, he gives uh, Mary a message. That's all that he says. That's all that Luke says. Then suddenly the story skips nine months mm -hmm. and Mary is giving birth or, you know, they're on their way to, uh, to mm -hmm. Bethlehem on the donkey. And um, if it's the most important story, the most important chapter in your story, and it's dealing with the backstory of your main character why would there be such a sudden gap there is mm -hmm. no verse that says uh anything to the effect of the holy spirit came upon mary or anything like that the gabriel tells mary the holy spirit is going to come upon you and then the matter is completely ignored mm -hmm. is it, it being ignored. brushed under the rug for some reason it, it ignored even more in the sense that even before Luke's gospel was written, here was the Apostle Paul who was writing this story. If it was such a, uh, an important part as it is today, Apostle Paul never mentions it, not once. And, and he's, his writings were the first, were the only really contemporaneous or, or as close to contemporaneous as we can get. Uh, obviously, the other Christians weren't talking about it yet. It came about later. How did that happen? You know, why? Why? Uh, there's a lot right. of questions that aren't answered unless we begin to look at this in a much more realistic way instead of a, quote, theological way. Mm -hmm.